Welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this beautiful day that God has given us. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, all of our staff, and all of the people who are helping to lead in worship today. We are so glad that you are joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship this morning. Thank you so much for that. Um, it's good to see you. It is World Community. Communion Sunday and Holy Communion for all people. Everyone is invited and encouraged to participate in our communion celebration today. I want to remind you that uh, hopefully you will have some uh, bread or a cracker or some kind of baked good as well as some juice or some kind of beverage so that you can celebrate Holy Communion with us today. And so if you haven't done that, I want you get those things together. So we'll have that for later on in the service. And then as it is World Communion Sunday, we are celebrating communion with Christians all around the world on this special Sunday, as well as taking up a special offering to support ethnic scholarships for students throughout the world. More information about that as we continue in worship. Um, I want to encourage everyone who's uh, joining in worship today to fill out our contact form. It is located in the comment section, pinned right at the top of that. There's a place there for you to put your contact information so that we can connect with you, get to know you better, particularly if this is your first time to worship with us online. online. We're really glad that you're here and we hope that you'll fill out that contact form. There's also a place on the contact form for prayer concerns and requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use the contact form for that and so that we can connect with you in small groups and in service and in growing in our faith together as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. When we do gather together for online worship, we covenant to participate and to be a blessing. And that means that we promise to participate fully in this online worship. So we encourage you to uh, put away other distractions, close other devices, and really come in close to your screen and uh, join with us online. When we're praying, let's all pray together. When it's time to stand up and sing, stand up and sing. Go ahead and fully participate in this time of service and communion. And then we covenant to be a blessing. And that means that in everything that we're doing together, we really wanna bless one another in our world in the way that we're uh, participating in the comments, in the way we're participating with people in our household and, and putting that out there into the world, that all of it is a blessing. So please covenant with us to that participation and blessing. The other thing that we always do when we gather for worship as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is share the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. I encourage you to say peace be with you uh, to folks online in the comments, with folks in your household, out into the world, peace be with you. And join in now as we are led by that peace be with you with some special members of our Douglas Avenue family. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Lucy Round. These are my sisters, Kenny and Lindy. Peace be with you. Hi. And, and also, also with, with you. you. I'm Tori Buchanan. And I'm River Buchanan. And there went Reed Buchanan. And we are members of the DAUMC congregation. Peace be with all peace, of you. Peace be with all of you.
Hi, I'm Ed Sims. I'm a member of the trustees and I also play in the praise band. And I'm Connie Sims and I'm a member of the staff parish relations committee and also a member of UMW. Please receive this call to worship. On this World Communion Sunday, we gather at Christ's table. Today, Christ's table looks like our kitchen tables and coffee tables. Bedside tables and TV trays. Patio tables, picnic tables, or no table at all. But we still gather at Christ's table near and far all around the world. So we may differ in language, custom, and tradition. We are all siblings in Jesus Christ. For there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And, and we, we are, are all one in God's, God's Spirit. Hi, I'm Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band, and I'm chair of Ad Council here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please stand and join us in our first song, In Christ There Is No East or West. Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord, close binding humankind. In Christ is neither Jew nor Greek, and neither slave nor free. Both male and female heirs are made, and all are kin. Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christ's souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. Oh, hello, it is time for small talk. So I want to invite all of the children who are worshiping with us to get in close to your screen and your devices so that you can see everything that happens. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. And you want to be sure to be able to see and hear everything that Miss Laurie and Laud are up to today. So come in close for Small Talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud, my helper, and Laud's helper, Cohen. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. We're talking about helpers. And God didn't just create animals and man and everything around us. He made sure that we have helpers, that we can't do it all alone. So you need to look around and think about who helps you. Juan, who helps you? Okay, yeah, I know, Cohen helps you. But who else would help a sheep? Maybe a shepherd, a vet? You wanna to go to the vet? No? Mm, yeah, probably not. But vets are helpers. Think about your teachers and our nurses and our doctors. People that help keep our world safe. And of course your moms and dads and your family. But here's something you may not realize. You can be a helper too. Yes, Laud, you can be a helper too. You might do some chores around your house. Maybe take out the trash. That's one of Laud's helper's chores. You might make your bed. You might help with dinner. You might set the table. Think of different ways that you can be a helper like God wants. And that's what we're going to be talking about this week in our Celebrate Wonder Camp. We're going to celebrate some helpers this week. So do what you can this week to be a helper. 
to those around you. And also pay attention and look for those helpers. So have a great Sunday. Have a great week. We love you and we miss you. Bye, everybody. Hi, I'm Doreen Kyleen. I'm currently the secretary on the Administrative Council and a member of Douglas Avenue's UMW Deborah Anna Circle. Today's reading of the Bible is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 7 and 12 through 13. The Apostle Paul is writing to the early Christian church about how they are bound together in the Holy Spirit and are made one in Jesus Christ. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all of the members of the body, through many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Please join us as we sing Many Gifts, One Spirit. God of change and glory, God of time and space, when we fear the future, give to us your grace. In the midst of changing ways, Give us still the grace to praise. Many gifts, one spirit, one love known in many ways. In our differences, blessing from diversity we praise. One giver, one Lord, one spirit, one word known in many ways. Hallowing our days for the giver, for the gifts. Praise, praise, praise. God of many colors, God of many signs, you have made us different, blessing many kinds. As the old ways disappear, let your love cast out our fear. Many gifts, one spirit, one love known in many ways. In our differences, blessing from diversity we praise. One giver, one Lord, one spirit, one word known in many ways. Hallowing our days for the giver, for the gifts. Praise, praise, praise. Today, our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family is joining with Christian churches and communities all around the world in the celebration of World Communion Sunday. Worldwide Communion Sunday originated in 1933 in Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh. Dr. Hugh Thompson Kerr, he was Shadyside's pastor, conceived of a World Communion Sunday with the goal to bring churches together in a service of Christian unity, remembering the importance of the Church of Jesus Christ and how each congregation is interconnected with another. The organization that's now known as the National Council of Churches endorsed World Communion Sunday in 1940. 
However, it was during World War II that the observance of World Communion Sunday really began to gain momentum and strength as people of faith found themselves trying to keep their world from coming apart. World Communion Sunday symbolized the effort to hold things together in a spiritual sense, emphasizing that we are one in Jesus Christ. For 80 years, World Communion has been a Sunday when Christians seek to bridge the divides that seem to grow between our communion tables of one denomination or type with those of another. While churches through the ages have often tried to put restrictive order and stringent rules around the communion table, God continues to show us that our celebration of communion is at Jesus's table. You know, Jesus, who ate with tax collectors and prostitutes, with people who would betray him and desert him. Jesus, who viewed no one as being outside the love and grace of God. Jesus embodied God's radical hospitality and extravagant grace, eating with outcasts and picnicking with the masses on hillsides and sharing meals in the homes of people that were far outside the religious rules of his day. That same grace and radical welcome is extended even to us even today, we are all invited to come to Jesus' table of love. We can actually be united at Jesus' table of love. I find that such a powerful promise and a tangible experience of hope for us in the living of these days. I'm also struck by how powerfully our celebration of World Communion displays the unity and the variety of different kinds of Christians and Christian practices around the world. Although we speak different languages, worship in different ways, have different uh, structures for organizing our ministries or practice different forms of praying, we are all part of one community of Christians throughout the, uh, the world, united in the power of the Holy Spirit. My own study of the Bible and experience of the Holy Spirit has led me to embrace the understanding that we have been created different on purpose. Our culture and ethic, ethnic differences are not an accident or an evidence of our brokenness, but instead are part of God's blessings. It would be impossible to contain the amazing wonder of our God in the world that God created in just one song or one painting or one language, one culture or one way of worship. This is why we have evolved so many ways of worship so that we can learn new ways to experience worship and serve our indescribable God. As the Apostle Paul celebrates in our Bible reading that Doreen shared with us today, though we are diversely many, we are one people in Christ through the uniting power of the Holy Spirit. One of the ways we embrace this unity and difference here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is through our practices around the sacrament of Holy Communion itself. A sacrament is a spiritual practice that connects us to the powerful, life-transforming love of God in a unique way. In our practice of Holy Communion, we are connected to God and to each other through our communal sharing in eating and drinking together, following Jesus' direction to eat and drink together often, remembering him. And we believe that we receive and experience God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit in a real way as we share the meal. Throughout the world, Christians practice this common meal in very different ways. But God unites and sanctifies all of these practices through the power of the Holy Spirit. Even within our congregation at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we practice different means of eating and drinking during communion. And each of our different practices has a slightly different emphasis. All of them, though, are important in helping us draw close to God's mysterious presence. 
That's why we often offer multiple ways to take communion during our in-person worship experiences. When we take communion with those little cups and the small pieces of bread, we often will do that in a way so that we are eating and drinking at the same time or in the same way. By all doing the same thing or doing it at the same time, we are stressing that we are one people. Our unity is expressed through the common timing or actions. And even though we are a single community, this practice of communion is often very personal and private. The single servings help us recall Christ's saving love for us each as an individual, unique, beloved child of God. When we take communion with the shared loaf of bread by dipping it into a shared cup, we are emphasizing that we are united as one community, sharing the same salvation and blessings of our one God and one Lord Jesus Christ. This practice, more formally called intinction, helps us focus on our common service to Jesus and our shared discipleship and mission as the church united. For the past several months, we have been practicing a new form of Holy Communion. As we have joined in our online worship broadcasts, we have been gathering across different locations and different times, bringing our own bread and beverage to share in a common meal from our various homes and locations. Like our other expressions of Holy Communion, this practice has some amazing gifts of the Holy Spirit to teach us. I love that this way of sharing in Holy Communion emphasizes that God makes every place a sanctuary. Our God has never been contained within the walls of our church building. By transforming every living room, dining room, family room, kitchen, porch, or outdoor, outdoor space into a sanctuary, and every screen into a pulpit, we can emphasize that God's presence makes all of these places holy. I also love how this online practice of Holy Communion makes clear the power of the Holy Spirit within the sacrament itself. Sometimes it's easy to think that if we just say the magic words while wearing the magic clothes, then we can control how and to whom God will show up. But God is not contained within the rigid walls of doctrine and tradition. The Holy Spirit blows where it will. And in this season, the Spirit is blowing through digital bits transmitted in electronic pulses through wires and radio waves. We have never been able to contain the Spirit, and we are being blessed by the Spirit's wildness, breaking through and transforming each place and each meal into a feast of God's blessing and transforming love. This World Communion Sunday, I invite you to join me in thanking God for the wide variety of practices that make up our one church. We are blessed by the many different traditions and doctrines that have formed, shaped, and supported us. We are blessed by the ways of other Christians and lovers of God throughout the world, and we can learn something wonderful from each of them. And we are blessed by the emerging practices and innovative expressions inspired by the Holy Spirit's gifts, service, and activities within our churches today, within Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. Amen. Good morning. Please join the praise band singers, Tom and me, in singing on you stay.
Good morning, my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and I'm the associate pastor here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is now the time in our worship service where we go to God in prayer. So I invite you to clear your mind if possible, um, take a deep breath and bow your head as we pray together. Oh, loving God, it's so easy to come to you and ask for this and to tell you what we want and to tell you our woes. But today we come to you with gratitude. We are so grateful, oh God, that we have the privilege um, to be together, that we can take communion in a bit with people from all around the world, from all denominations. What a gift that is. What a gift it is, oh God, that you are journeying with us through this time, a time that many of us have felt unsettled and uncertain. Um, we've had fear, we've had disappointments and grief. But oh, holy God, you are with us and beside us, um, and we are so grateful for that. So we offer you our hearts and our gratitude this morning. But we do want to offer you, ask you to be with us in many places, to continue to be with all of those that are ill and sick and grieving and addicted. Oh God, draw near to them those that have been affected by the coronavirus, and especially, oh God, we pray for family members and healthcare workers and all of those that are part of this healing of this virus. Be with the scientists and may they find a vaccine soon. We ask, oh God, in the midst of this day where we do feel grateful, but we are asking you also to be with our church we are grateful for the many, many ministries that happen in our church. And we ask you to continue to bless the people that we serve. And we are so thankful, oh God, for the many people who come and assist and help with the many ministries that we do. We ask you, God, to show up for our country and to help each of us feel a sense of power as our country has had much disappointments and division we ask you to help us to open our hearts and minds how we can be a part of the healing of this division. Oh God, we come to you now in a time of silence and we offer you our own individual prayers at this time. And now God with all the gratitude that we can have. We now together pray that prayer that you taught us to pray so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Generosity is a spiritual practice that we share with Christians throughout the world as a way that we show our love and our faithfulness in following Jesus in supporting the ministries of Jesus' church. And we do that right here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in our financial giving. Thank you so much for the way that you have been giving to support the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and all of the ways that we're able to be in worship and service with one another and to our community. You can give your gifts through our online giving portal. The link for that is pinned right in the comment section. You can set up automatic withdrawals with your financial institution that go to Douglas Avenue. You can set up an automatic a gift with us at Douglas Avenue by calling our church office. And of course, by sending your churches, your checks into the church office. All of that giving goes right to work in making a difference in our community and our world today in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you again to fill out the contact form if you have not already done that. That is a way to put yourself right into ministry with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I remind you that there's a place there for your prayer concerns and requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. I want to remind you that we'll be heading into communion and you should bring those uh, communion uh, things close to you. Bring your uh, bread, your baked good, your crackers, your juice, your beverage, whatever it is that you have so that you can be a part of our communion celebration. 
we're going to have a mission moment now about our special offering for World Communion Sunday that goes to support scholarships throughout the world for people preparing for vocations in Christian, Christian ministry and service. And let's hear that mission moment now. When was the last time you shared a meal with someone on the other side of the world? Jesus prayed that we would be one, yet when we look at the world today, too often we see his followers divided while the world's most pressing needs go unaddressed. If we focus on the forces that pull us apart, it's easy to feel discouraged, overwhelmed, and anything but united. But on World Communion Sunday, the first Sunday in October, we celebrate what binds us together, the love of Christ that empowers us to make this world a better place as one people committed to one purpose. This rich ecumenical tradition of World Communion Sunday that began about 80 years ago celebrates the diversity of believers of all ethnic backgrounds. Through your generous gift on this special Sunday of the United Methodist Church, we do more together to promote unity by empowering education. Your support provides scholarships and in-service training programs for U.S. racial and ethnic students and international students on both undergraduate and graduate levels, giving them tools they need to transform the world. Together, we equip students from around the globe to shape a unified future in so many ways by helping the least of these know the mercy and love of Jesus. As believers unite on World Communion Sunday, our bread may be different, but we share our love for the bread of life. As we share the fruit of the vine, our commitment to follow the example of Jesus unites us. Together, as engaged disciples, we give on World Communion Sunday to promote unity and empower passionate students to tear down the walls that divide us and lead us to do more through our shared communion in Christ. Together, we do more. As we come together in this time of Holy Communion on World Communion Sunday, I want to remind you to bring your bread, your baked good, your crackers, whatever you have, bring that close to you. Bring your cup of juice or beverage, whatever you've brought, and bring that in close to you as we get ready to pray together and celebrate at Christ's table wherever we are. God's people are gathering for worship in so many ways, online, in small groups, outside in God's creation, in song and in silence, with tears and with shouts of joy. We join in this worldwide chorus of those who call upon the name of the Lord. On this World Communion Sunday, we remember especially the scriptures are fulfilled as people will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. So you are invited to join in this meal at Christ's table today, wherever you are and whoever you are, church member, not a church member, with your culture and your race, whatever your age, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with your household, in the fullness of who you are, even if you feel empty, you are welcome right now, and you are not alone as we gather at Jesus' table in all of these different places and times. A very important part of our communion is to confess our sins to the Lord. So I do invite you now to bow your head and confess your sins. Amen. And I will now offer a prayer of confession. God of mercy, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole being. We have not done things we should not have done, and we have left undone things which we should have done. We have built walls between neighbors and between countries. We have ignored the cries of those in need. Forgive us and set us free that we may live into the hope of your calling, that your reign may come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And our assurance of pardon is this. Thanks be to God. Jesus died for our sins and brings resurrection life. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
We're going to continue now with our prayers of great thanksgiving. And again, bring that uh, bread or baked good and juice close to you while we have these prayers. I invite you to join aloud in the responsive prayers as they appear on your screen and with the motions that we do. And then as we sing the hymn, Bread of the World, interspersed with our prayers today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the, our God, our Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Bread of the world in mercy broken, wine of the soul in mercy shed, and be thy feast to us the token that by thy grace our souls are fed. We praise you, nurturing God, for feeding us at Christ's table wherever we are gathered, at home, outside, across geography and times of worship, all the world around. Patiently, you plant the seeds of faith, waiting to harvest the fruits of our lives. Busily you grind the grains of our experience, mixing the dough, quietly, restlessly, you yeast Christ's church to life. Bread of the world in mercy broken. We thank you, nourishing God, for the strength we draw from the shared witness of our sisters and brothers around the world who share this holy meal with us today. Make us bold to seek justice and quick to act in compassion. Shape us well that we might become the bread of life to those in need. Wine of the soul in mercy shed. We rejoice in you, surprising God, for your abiding presence. Spark our imaginations that we might share your dream of unity. Open our hearts so Christ's healing love may flow from your gathered church into a parched, thirsty world. I invite you to lift your hands over your bread and cup and pray with me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here in many places and times, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And be thy feast to us a token. We pray to you, healing God, that your people find sustenance at Christ's table, wherever they are on this day. Feed our spirits that we may work together as the body of Christ around the world, preaching good news to captives, restoring health to those in pain, and bring your kingdom here on earth. That by thy grace our souls are fed. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we will eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. I invite you now to pick up your piece of bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. I invite you to pick up your cup, drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you.
Eternal God. Eternal God. Thank you for this holy mystery. Thank you for this holy mystery. In which you have given yourself to us. In which you have given yourself to us. Through the bread and the cup. Through the bread and the cup. Send us from this meal. Send us from this meal. In the strength of your spirit. In the strength of your spirit. To give ourselves to others. To give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us on our closing hymn, One Bread, One Body. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one. or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we Throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Grain for the kids, many the works, one in the Lord of all, one bread, one body. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Grain for the feet scattered and grown, gathered to one for all, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we Throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in our uh, celebration of Holy Communion on World Communion Sunday. I pray that this experience has been meaningful and powerful for you, that you are uplifted and hopeful as you head into your week. Um, please continue to connect with us. We want to connect with you so that we can continue to grow in faith and service and our love and following of Jesus Christ in our community and in our world. Please use that contact form so that we can be in touch. Know that we love you. We miss getting to see you in person, but we feel so blessed that we have all of these different ways that we can stay connected in love and in service with one another and to God. Now, as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you entirely, you, beloved child of God, that Jesus Christ saves you and loves you every day, and that the Holy Spirit in its wildness empowers you into amazing service and purpose in our world. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Mm -hmm.